Okay, I'll go ahead and let you continue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, yeah, I wish they could upgrade things. <laughs> <laughs> my my phone does strange things. It just went through a mm -hmm. upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> they hired a new engineer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So um, we're again in our, our minor profits. We're doing again. This one's both of them for this week are, are pretty simple and basic ones. Um, so we're we're doing Habakkuk and Zephaniah. Um, Habakkuk is definitely one that very rarely is used um, as a pastor. Although I have I have used it uh, before. But it's definitely a rare one to do. But any of the minor prophets really are uh, mm -hmm. pretty rare to be used when preaching. Yes. But, um, it, it's famous for how lo long, O oh Lord, will I call for help and you will not hear. Uh, that's kind of a, a famous um, kind of line. Uh, you know, why are you silent when the wicked swallow up those more righteous than they? I mean, it's, it's a very... Um, so I, I had a, a professor refer to uh, the minor prophets as the doom and gloomers. And uh, <laughs> Habakkuk, right. yeah, Habakkuk is definitely uh, a, a doom and gloomer. Um, there's not a lot of positivity happening. So uh, the, the people of Judah are, are wicked. They're violent. They're corrupt. They're, they're just, I mean, they're the worst of the worst. Everybody that they talked about before were horrible. Well, they've, they've taken up all their habits. Um, they are just as bad. Um, there's uh, no, you know, it, it's the might are right uh, mentality is going on in the entire country right now. There's, there's no justice. Um, nothing is, is flowing properly. Um, and so God decides, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to take care of things. So Habakkuk, though, um, kind of goes to God and um, trying to save Judah basically from itself. God answers, of course, but not the way that Habakkuk was uh, really praying for, wanting, desiring. Uh, so like normal people. <laughs> well, exactly, exactly. And see, that's what, that's what I've always said. God, God pretty much, God does answer every single prayer. But I honestly feel it's very rarely the way we want it to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's what right. we need, but not what we want. Um, right. And so God's like, all right, I'm going to bring justice. I'm going to hand you guys over to the Chalidians. Um, uh, you guys are, okay, see you later type of thing. Um, he wants there to be justice. He knows there needs to be justice. And they basically have to accept the consequences of their actions. They need to take it on. They have dug their own grave in essence. Mm -hmm. um, right. And so they're not getting any way out. So um, God says, you know, they're, yes, I'm handing you over, but understand that the Chalidians are going to get their just desserts as well, which I thought was really interesting. So if we, go into chapter two, we see things like the Babylonians um, uh, looted, you know, took over, caused all sorts of issues for other nations, ransacked and robbed them, and yet they were going to get the same thing happen to them. The Babylonians, uh, because remember, the Chalidians and the Babylonians, same thing right here. Um, the Babylonians cut off other families so they could secure their own empire, but soon the work of their hand will cry out against them. Uh, chapter two is full of things that were going to happen to uh, the ones who were taking over Judah. Uh, it was a list of all of these um, things, all of the negative, all the impact that was going to happen to them, and they were going to be struggling, and they were going to have issues, and they were they were really going to I mean, the, the Judeans may have thought they had it rough, but it was going to be much worse for those who were conquering them. Um, mm -hmm. Even though God was, in essence, handing them over, they were still his people. Um, 
he was ashamed of them. He was upset with them, but they were still his people. And so they needed corrected, but understood then that there was not, this wasn't going to be the end all. Uh, he wasn't going to allow them to be wiped out. And so um, uh, he spoke through, of course, uh, all of this. Judah followed Israel's example from Second Kings, so God would bring a similar fate upon them. But this time he would discipl discipline them through the Babylonians. And of course, Habakkuk saw this. Um, like Nahum, Habakkuk foresaw God's judgment on those who oppress other nations and led them into wickedness. And so again, um, it was it was all God kind of correcting. This was a, a, a means of correction. That's all this boils down to. What Habakkuk was all talking about. It was a correction of God's people. Uh, it was. Now, a was there was it, is there any prophecy for Israel in Habakkuk? It, no, it it okay. doesn't. I didn't if think I so. Correctly, it's all focused on Judah. Yes. Um, yeah. It was all focused on Judah. Now, Israel had their own judgments called down upon them, but this was, Habakkuk was sent to Judah. Uh, specifically, even Habakkuk actually was the one who went to God. Um, and, and that's, it, it was interesting because it seemed like most of the other times, God would go to the prophets and say, you need to say this. But here it was Habakkuk actually going to God and saying, God, your people need correction. And you almost wonder if he, he almost regretted it um, yeah. because again, he was not getting the way he wanted them to be. Right, right, right. Uh, right. So, but it wasn't Habakkuk really, now maybe I'm wrong, but it looks like it's only a conversation <laughs> between God and Habakkuk. Yeah. It was a, it really didn't involve anybody else, did it? I, I, not really. Um, we, we don't we don't really see any documentation or anything specifically saying it seems like it's just God and Habakkuk having a conversation yeah. um, but but it does talk about this progression of, of judgment and what's going to happen and here's what's going to happen to the Chalidians the slash Babylonians um, it, it talks about this whole process and so yeah it, it's really more of just a straight up conversation between the two of them Unless somebody read it, mm -hmm. read something differently. I, I did not catch that there was any other references. Um, so it, it, just in a general term, why does, why does God seem uh, to not be doing anything in the face of all this evil and injustice? Because really, that's what all this is talking about, isn't it? Yes. It's evil and injustice. Yep. God seems somewhat silent in it, much like today. God at times seems silent. Mm -hmm. Well, what does it play out? Well, it, it reminds me of um, a, a post I'm sure many of you have seen on Facebook. Uh, I, you know, I want to ask God why he allows evil and injustice to happen. And somebody says, I, I'm scared God's going to ask me the same question. And mm. so it's the, in essence, the aspect of free will. We're free choosing. Will. God's people were choosing to directly go against him, just like we do mm. it today. We choose to go against God. We can't blame God because he didn't tell us to stop because he did. He gave us scripture. He gave us guidance. He gave us uh, a time to connect with him one-on-one, -on -one, and we ignore it. We choose to go against it. And then when we dig ourselves so deep, then we holler for him uh, to help us out of this hole that we dug ourselves into. And he's yeah. there, um, but that doesn't mean we're free from the consequences of our actions. Mm. Uh, it, it, it's yeah. like somebody who accepts Christ in prison. Um, they don't get out of prison. Uh, they still have to deal with the consequences of their actions, but at least the 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 parameters have changed in their life in a way. Uh, uh, their life has changed, 
So I guess that's the way I always looked at it is, uh, yeah, any of these times, especially in the Old Testament, where where people failed and fall, uh, you know, trying to do what they want to do, and, and it seems like mm-hmm. God is silent, it's because God is kind of letting them run their own lives to see what happens, because we have free will. Um, and it, again, it goes to the analogy that the teacher is always silent during the test. Uh, this is the time when God is giving people a test, and they're choosing to go through the test on their own. Um, they they know the answers. Uh, it's not a, a it's not a, a closed book test. That, in essence, the book mm-hmm. is open. Mm-hmm. It's just they're choosing whether or not to open it or to follow the guidance. It's no different than during Noah's time. Um, the people mm-hmm. knew what they were supposed to do. Uh, there wasn't any right. question. Um, and finally, God said, "All right, well, you know, all of you have failed except for Noah and." His family. The family. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> wonder, this goes back to the 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 thing. God is God. Right. Yeah. So we can't can't question yeah. him. Well, Habakkuk did. He challenged him. He asked him why. He told him he didn't think he was doing the right thing. Right. He right. He challenged him, but no, God I didn't, didn't change his mind. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. <laughs> Well, and, and I think I think it was it was more because of sympathy towards the people rather than thinking God was wrong. I think Habakkuk had more of a a, a a compassion towards the people. Not that God didn't, but God also knew that they needed this to get back on the right pathway. So the thing here, um, as I'm listening and reading what's going on. He isn't out there pr- promoting Israel because he's not really promoting Christianity. Oh no, no, he's no, supporting. Not. He's actually doing like the, like right now he's buried in two different places, one in Israel and one in right in Iran. Uh-huh. I don't know that happened, but so he was really just trying to protect the Jewish religion. That's all he was really concerned about. The right. people were living to be Jews, or you could almost flip the coin and say, as Muslims do now. Because we don't really know how he did. I mean, we don't have any other history to go with that. And not as what the Christians were wanting, you know, or the other, the Israel was wanting to do and move towards Christianity. I don't know that, can we say that he actually believed in Christ? Well, uh, he believed, I think he believed God. Uh, I think he believed God because of all the conversation. I don't think that Habakkuk, and of course, I'm subject to rethinking this, but Habakkuk, I don't think he would have spent this much time in dissertation with God if he didn't believe him. He didn't believe he had a, uh, a plan, a way for Habakkuk to get through this and the people. But he, but he did have a plan. And even, even when you get into uh, when... Christ was walking on the earth when he first came they thought the plan was he was going to be a king he was right. going to come in and wipe out the Romans right. and take them out right. all that they didn't realize that until later yeah. so Habakkuk could have had the same thing thinking that the nation would be strong privy. and he was not you know Good he man. wasn't privy to that part of the plan you know at that time yeah we don't know God's plan how many times in the Bible does God take us a different direction in the Bible to get to eventually a point over here that we don't even, we're not even thinking about. And that's the way in our lives today. Uh, we can see where God is leading us when we look back. But at the time we're saying, God, what are you thinking about? Why do this? And, uh, that's just the way God thinks. Well, I mean, even he even plans looking, for our good. Exactly, you know, and and Jewish, or, uh, Jewish, Jesus Himself even did things completely different. Or, yes. or uh, there were so many different ways He did things, like the fact that you had the one guy who was lame since birth, and the disciples right. asked Him, "Why was this? What sin did this yeah. man do, or to, did his parents do?" 
And he's like, they didn't do anything. He's here to show the glory of God. Um, right. And, you know, we would never have thought, oh, what a great way to illustrate that. Um, no. <laughs> you know, that, that's not the way we would have perceived it. And yet it was such a, a testimony to, to uh, the power of God through Jesus Christ that, we're, that they were able to, to see this. It was Amen. a visual thing. It was a thing that like really slapped people yeah. in the face. And in the same way with, with God and, and God people or God's people during the Exodus and and all the different ways that God saved the people, um, you know, it could have been it could have been more subtle, it could have been more basic, and yet um, or or the the quote unquote logical way, um, but it wasn't. Right. It was it was God's way, the way He chose to do it. Um, you know. Uh, God could could have uh, led the the people out of Egypt uh, in a route that horses and soldiers could not have followed. Instead, he leads them to the Red Sea and parts it. I mean, that's not the first route most people would think. I'm going to head right <laughs> towards the water. Uh, and, and yet that's the way God chose to do it because... He wanted to show his might, not only to his people, but I think to the Egyptians as well. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, it's it's just God's way are are unfathomable. Um, yes. We just don't get it, and sometimes we get hurt during the process. But uh -huh. it's also so. I don't know if I've ever shared this illustration with you before, but I heard it one time and I thought it was a, a really interesting one. So think about, um, say, a bear trap. Uh, I don't know if you know much about bear traps. I didn't until I heard this illustration. But what happens is once a, the pressure plate is pushed, it snaps the jaws together. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the way to release it is basically to push back down on the pressure plate to get it to release. Now, if somebody gets their leg, uh, or let's say an animal gets their leg in a bear trap, okay? If, if we come over and start pushing on the plate or pushing on their leg to get the plate to go down, it's causing them pain. Mm -hmm. They don't have the comprehension to understand that 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 small amount of pain is actually necessary to give them freedom. Good point. As, as a Good human point. being, we have that comprehension. We have that understanding uh, as opposed to over an animal. And, you know, it, it's kind of the same way. You know, God is such a higher level than we are. Uh, we're almost to the extent of the intelligence and wisdom of an animal in comparison to God. Um, I, I just always thought that was kind of an interest. It's not the not a perfect illustration, but I thought it was a kind of an interesting mm -hmm. one. That kind of, it makes sense because we yeah. we do go through some pain a lot of times, but once we come out on the other side, we realize that the pain was actually worth it. <laughs> it was good that we we dealt with some pain because it made us better. It made us um, you know more aware too because sometimes the people who have gone through pain are the best guides the best counselors for those who are then coming behind them going through similar pain uh mm -hmm. those who maybe don't have a strong faith and and for for somebody to say well i went through the same thing and i god helped me through it um i, I point to my mom who was a great uh example you know she went through cancer multiple times and the way she handled it was a way, the way of faith. Uh, and, and her testimony was simply the way she lived. Uh, it wasn't, she never stood up in front and preached or anything like that. She would have hated doing that. Um, but her example, just in living, you know, uh, was it St. Francis who said in, in everything you do, preach, and if necessary, use your words. Um, yeah. You know, it's that same idea, so. But Habakkuk, yeah, I mean, he was, uh, that was kind of the way everything kind of worked out in the book of Habakkuk through God. Mm -hmm. Yep. Any other thoughts? And of course, we know that um, also Daniel actually saw the, 
the fall of of the Babylonians too. We see it in the book of Daniel um, that he actually saw what Habakkuk was was prophesizing about all of the the turmoil, all the issues that Ch the Chalidian slash Babylonians were going to go through. Daniel actually witnessed it. So, yep. All right. Yeah. Any other thoughts on Habakkuk? Again, not a lot to even, I mean, there's not a lot on this one. Um, so Zephaniah, um, any thoughts on Zephaniah before I start going into this one? Again, we're dealing with Judah. And yeah, again, this is just kind of a continuation. Uh, Judah is is uh, still fallen. They're they're not any. Uh, they have not improved their situation, uh, for sure. Um, so the the king um, met met what Anasaya. Well, I'll we'll say that's it. Um, I mean, he had gone into adultery, even including uh, human sacrifice. And, and his son took after his father and made it even worse, doing all sorts of nasty and terrible things, um, you know, like father, like son. And so, uh, you know, definitely a big issue. Um, and, and he is not letting the people go unpunished. He's making sure that they're dealing with the issues, uh, the problems, the consequences. They're having peace. Um, and uh, Josiah brings them back to God. And then Zephaniah comes to Judah and God is going to bring, bring it to an end. Uh, he's going to, mm -hmm. he's going to close them down in essence. Uh, and it's going to be bad. It's going to be rough. It's going to be a, a pretty, pretty bad one. Um, and in fact, uh, it says that, not only is Judah going to have to deal with it, but the whole world. Um, Zephaniah tells the people that the nations of the world cannot stand. Moab, Ammon, Ethiopia, and especially Assyria. Uh, Zephaniah 1.18. Um, All nations will know that he is God and he will make a complete end. Indeed, a terrifying one of all the inhabitants of the earth. Um so I mean he's he's coming he's coming to smite um, and and he's going to keep keep that a going um, and God has big plans uh, for for the end of the world I mean it's not just going to be little bits he's going to be he's wiping the slate clean uh, is really what he's talking about here um, and this is where we we hear. We're starting to get some more connections with the end of the world. Uh, all the nations are going to call him God, uh, call him Lord, um, and everybody's going to be together in peace and, and justice and joy, and everything's going to be perfect for everybody and rainbows and kittens and all the good stuff that happened in life. Uh, that's really what's going to happen here. And uh, so we have this, this guy uh, Zephaniah that comes to the people and he's telling them all of this and again it's uh, mm -hmm. it, it would have been interesting because they were they were in a moment of peace and this was usually not when God really came to them it was usually when there was conflict and issues and problems but it was at this time that God actually sent Zephaniah to to you know, call them out and say, mm -hmm. oh, you think things are good? Well, let me tell you um, that type of thing. So um, now what's interesting is that he can actually, Zephaniah traces his lineage back to Hezekiah. Now, is this the same Hezekiah? We don't know. There, there's uh, no, it's the king of Judah. Right. In Most my likely, opinion. It makes sense that it is. I mean, everything kind of lines up, but it never says specifically that, you know, it's the same guy. Right. We're connecting the dots that it is. I mean, it just makes sense. It would almost be weird if it wasn't 
him, right. honestly. Right. But um, after Josiah dies in battle, his son takes the t- throne uh, for 22 years. They disobey God. Uh, they stir up all sorts of trouble with the Babylonians. They ignore Jeremiah and the priests and the citizens. Um, well, they don't treat the temple with respect at all. Um, and no. Zephaniah's, I mean, basically his message, what God sent him to share, comes true. Um, and all of this plays out in the Kings, Chronicles, and Jeremiah. So Zephaniah was the one to say, yeah, God's wiping the slate clean. It's going to happen. And it does. Uh, and it's a big, big, big part of the Old mm-hmm. Testament, um, it, it, which again is so interesting because Zephaniah is not one, again, very many people use when preaching. Um, no, and no. yet its connection to so much is obvious. I mean, it it connects mm-hmm. everything. It's such a, a thread going through the whole thing. Um, and and w- my commentary says that Zephaniah takes the bad news first approach. Um, he he, he kind of does uh, the fact that you know everything's going to be absolutely destroyed. Jerusalem's going to be wiped out. There's nothing going to be anything left. Uh, and then he comes back and says, but, "But yeah, but." Judah and Israel will come back. It'll be better than ever. Um, you thought it was good before. By gosh, this is going to be great. Uh-huh. So it's an interesting approach, which it kind of reminds me a little bit of the book of Job, where you know he had yeah. everything. And then at the end, everything is not only good, not only as good as it was, but it's even better, which I don't get the fact that, you know, his, his family dies and he gets yeah. more and they say, oh yeah, it's just as good as before. Well, maybe he kind of liked the ones at the beginning. Um, you know, maybe he, he would kind of like to have not had to deal with their death. Um, yes. type of thing. But that's, that's just me, I guess. I don't know. So that's kind of my breakdown for Zephaniah. Any thoughts on Zephaniah? Again, a very... It's a, a short one, not a lot going on. I mean, there is, but I mean, there's not, it all kind of comes together in one thing. There's really not mm-hmm. different multiple pieces. So I would like to see the timeline of the doom and gloom prophets. Oh, yeah. To see yeah, chronologically. how many centuries God kept telling them, I'm gonna kick you out. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. You know. I'm telling you. I'm gonna. I'm sending somebody else to tell you. I'm gonna wipe you out. And then finally, mm-hmm. he finally gives up after what you know, a thousand years right. or whatever. But yeah. it's just we're hard-headed people. We we we're in the spur of the moment. We're all for it. We're great. We love it. And then that leaves, and we're like, eh, you know. Yeah. Well, it it you know it, it talks about you know that that. Uh, a second of, of God's time is like a thousand years or whatever. Right. It's mm-hmm. just a different concept of time. You know, when uh, even even in the New Testament, it, Christ talks about the fact that he's going to be coming soon. Well, uh-huh. you know, what does that mean? His second coming is soon. That's, that's it's inevitable. Term. It's inevitable. Mm-hmm. We know it's going to happen. But what does soon actually mean? And it's the same way with this. When God says, I'm going to do it, well, when? No. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, when are you actually going to do you to know? Right. Yes. That's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Again, it, we point to scripture where it says, you know, we are not only do we not know, we're not meant to know. Right. Um, it's all up to God's timing, which is really, again, kind of annoying sometimes. And oh, yeah. Watched any of the chosen? I, I started watching right. it. Well, we watched it last night. We watched, I don't know, what episode two, two and episode six, three, whatever. Or yeah. And uh, three or four. When, when Christ gets the uh, Jesse to tells him get up, walk straight out, out of, from the pool because he's lame. Yeah. And they scribes come over and yell at him because you can't pick up and carry your mat and relocate your you know your bed during shabbat uh-huh. 
Right. He told me I could. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. They told me yeah. I could. <laughs> right. And then they go, I do that. And he said, and in their vernacular, he says, sometimes you just <laughs> yes. got to stir the water. Yes. Yeah, because mm-hmm. he got them all stirred yeah. up, and that's what he was. I'm all stirred up. <laughs> and it was like he told him. He told him when he got up in the morning, "We need to go. I got to see a man." Right. And you know, he took Paul, he took Simon, and he took Matthew, and all that, and they walked. Mm-hmm. And there he is. You know, so these guys are going, like, "Where? Where are we going? And what are we doing here? This is a pagan place." And right, we're going to talk to that man right over there. He's been here a long, t- you know. Yes. Like, so you it, don't know. Right. That's the thing, and it's. Um, Christ was all about. He knows, but we don't. Right. Christ was all about stirring the waters. Um, you know, again, like we talked about, the fact that it's it's done completely different than logically we think they should do it. Well, our logic, our, our logic. logic, our logic. Yeah. If 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 you take Christ as stirring the waters, and then you go back to these minor prophets, we're stirring the waters. Oh, and yeah. somewhere along the lines, God said, "Well, this isn't working. Let's try this path now." You know, right. <laughs> like, yeah. They, yeah. They, this seems not to work, even though it's a great plan. It's just not working out, right? Because I gave them free will and all this stuff, and you know, I gotta let them. Know. So it's interesting when yes. you pull that pull that in there. And well, uh, I've got it. Yeah, go ahead, Dallas. Uh, Wayne was asking about how long the prophets were. I've got a little thing here. Uh, Obadiah was the first one, and he was in 850 B.C. Okay. And then we go down to Malachi, who was who ended his in 417. Okay. So we're talking about 400 years. 400 years. 25 years, something like that. Yeah. So he gave them quite enough time to straighten up and fly right. He did. <laughs> he did. And, 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 you know, it's it's time and time again, it's people are not they're not learning um, and they're mm-hmm. not teaching the next generation. Um, they're like, they're, they're teaching them the way they're currently living, which has gotten them into trouble. Um, they're not teaching them the proper way. This is what the prophets were talking about. And, you know, and of course the prophets in general didn't always see what they were prophesizing about. Sometimes they did, but yeah, a lot yeah. of the times they did and, you know, that had to be frustrating for them to an extent because, you know, the, well, God told me to do this. I kind of like to see them, you know, see them change their ways. I'd mm-hmm. like to see God uh, come back to his people. Of course, we also look at, at uh, Jonah, who wanted the same thing. He just wanted his, those people, the Ninevites, to get in big trouble. Um, right. Yeah. right. <laughs> so it's, it's – I. To be a prophet, I think, would have been very, very difficult because not only frustrating, it would have been because not <laughs> only do you know what you're saying is true. God told you um, not only do you, you know, <laughs> probably have sympathy for the people. You're never going to see the fulfillment of, of your prophecies, potentially. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and so, you know, you would have been hated. Um, you would have been ostracized. Uh, most likely because you're going against everybody and at least with Christ he knew the outcome Um, Mm -hmm. he knew how everything was going to play out and the prophets I you know they they had to have such incredible faith to follow what was going basically they were stirring the water and run against the grain they were definitely going against the grain and so it would have been very, very difficult and had to have a, an enormous amount of faith in God. Um, right. You know. Well, and, and that's like us today. When we begin witnessing to someone, it's rare that we see them come to Christ uh, quickly. Now, it may happen over time, but it's rare that we see a, a, a conversion right. that happens quickly. Uh, it just doesn't happen many times. We don't know what happens to the person, especially uh, preaching in a uh, seminar, uh, an evangelistic seminar. You don't know. You're just preaching the word of God and you're praying that God's Holy Spirit that is indwelling 
people will bring people to the saving knowledge of Christ. Well, what what do they say? It takes like seven times um, of sharing the gospel before somebody starts to to break before it starts breaking through. So you know, we we may share the share the gospel, and it may be the first time somebody's heard it, or the third, or the fourth. Um, very rarely are we number seven. Um, it's it, but it's also our our sharing of the gospel is also vital because if yes. say it takes seven times, well, if we're not there to offer the first or third or fourth or whatever, that means it's that much longer before they actually get it. Um, yes. And it's it's that way with any sort of learning or or um, understanding that we need to have a process and right. each step is vitally important. Um, but we just may not know. So, you know, we went to, to Guatemala a, a few years ago and uh, our job while we were there was we were helping build a school. Well, we were the ones who dug the foundation. We did not see the school come to completion while we were on the right. trip. That was never right. going to happen. And so we had to wait a while before we saw pictures of the school building up. And it was awesome. But we also know that we were never going to see it completed while we were there. We were not going to see it in person. We were going to have to wait. But our part was important, too. Um, it was it had to be done. And it was so vital. it was vital. I mean, come on, you, you got to have a good foundation. You and so have a foundation. It, it was it was kind of a neat it was neat because not only it was important but it was also a part that nobody would ever see nobody right. ever sees the foundation of a building yeah. um, the part that's dug in the ground nobody ever sees that mm -hmm. uh, and so it was it was a great illustration for part of what we are as followers of Christ as as Christians that we help people with the foundation. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean we are ever seen and that's okay. It's okay to not be seen as long as there's a sturdy foundation for somebody's faith. Yes. Uh, and so it's just one of those pieces that, uh, cause it, it was, it was kind of annoying. I'll tell you the truth. Cause I really wanted to see it done while we were there. <laughs> and I knew of course it wasn't going to happen, but you know, you, you want to be completed. I'm I'm a uh -huh. I'm big on completion. Anything I do, I want to see all of it. So right. I, like I started listening to a new podcast. So I'm going to listen to every single episode of that podcast. And it's been going on for three or four years. It's going to take me a while to get to all of them. <laughs> um, but I'm going to listen to every one of them because I like completeness. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah. It's like when yes. we went to uh uh, Kentucky on a mission trip. Uh, our job was to frame this room they were building, uh -huh. and that's all we did was was frame right. it and put the uh, rafters up. Right. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. somebody else was coming the next week and working on it again. So it's like you said, our part was probably never seen. Right. When it was exactly. complete. Mm -hmm. But by gosh, they would have known if you did. If it wasn't job right. right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, yes, yes. Yeah. and yeah. so that's, that's the part that uh, sometimes we struggle with. We, you know, um, the, the, the people in the background, the work done in the background, I would say is, is very rarely, is it not actually the most important part of any project? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's very rarely the part you see up front. Um, it's right. always the other stuff that is behind <clears throat> that the front part is built on top of. Um, usually the, the, the front part is usually just the pretty. Um, it's not always uh -huh. the, the work that needs to be done. So, yeah. Yep, yep. Any other thoughts? Which, again, goes to, I think, the, the Old Testament. Um, you know, it's, it's what Christ uh, grew up with. It's what the Jewish people grew up with. It's what the, yes. the, the Christian faith is built on is the Jewish faith, the Old Testament. 
Um, it's all built upon that. Uh, it, it's a process. Yeah. 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 The movie watched the chosen the other day. They're talking about. Um, I forget which one it was now. That can almost from his mind and recite the Torah. You know, he just. Oh. Um, they said he just he just rattles off. They said, and then these others said, "Well, we went through the same school, the same you know." Right. <laughs> Yeah. I just found it boring. The other guy said, I found it interesting. It was history. Right. You know? So it was, and then you got like Matthew, had the slightest idea. You know, he didn't even go through school because they found out he was good with numbers and they shipped him off and he could make more money working for the Romans. You know, and that comes into play. Yeah, they showed the conflict. Within the Before 12 disciples. Well, Christ was out healing. He was out healing, and they showed them being bored, lost for direction, not knowing what to do, because their teacher is healing people and not paying attention to them, and they're a little upset about it, you know? Right. Yes. Yes. Well, so they, they were the favorites, so why was he <laughs> messing around with the others? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They, they, were, they were the teacher's pets. And they wanted they wanted the teacher's attention all the time. Yeah, yeah, very human. Um, which which I, I like the way it portrays the people in that those situations because it makes them real. Um, they're, yeah. they're not they're not just these abstract ideas. Um, and and we see that actually through scripture itself, where it shows them being very human. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. not, they're not they're not saints um, they're saints but they're not saints you know what Matthew, I mean Matthew makes a comment I wish people would quit speaking to me in parables <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand I, I can I think about them but it just don't, why don't they just use common language right? yes yeah. Quit, give me a parable for everything I ask a question about <laughs> yep I get that <laughs> yeah just give me a straight answer yes or no. and that, that was one of the things i always thought was interesting about jesus is even though he spoke in parables he was even clearer though than the teachers of the law that they had beforehand um i, I think mm -hmm. i think uh he made it far more accessible than the teachers of the law you had to be high thinkers um to really comprehend yes. what they were talking about because uh -huh. Even though they they probably gave very straight answers, they didn't give you the opportunity to think about it. Um, right. It was like, okay, I'm not going to even explain it. Just don't do this and do do this. Whereas Jesus gave them the opportunity to come to the solution on their own and therefore kind of own the idea, uh, own wow. the concept of what they needed to be rather than giving a straight answer. Because it, it's, it's like uh, in school, when you're in elementary school, you're given the straight answers. Um, there's no thinking about it. This is the answer. Don't even go beyond that. You get into college and they encourage you to think beyond that. Okay, yes, that's the answer. But let's expand on that. And, and I think, and to really own it. And even though your answer may be wrong, at least you're kind of owning it. It's your own perception, your own ideas. I guess more of a, a philosophy idea than anything rather than mm -hmm. traditional uh, education. It's more mm -hmm. of a philo phil philosophical approach. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And they brought out and what I've gathered in some of this. And then I, I see this. Uh, he gives you a parable, which is a, an answer to your question. Right. If I just answered your question. You would say, okay, that's the answer for this circumstance. Right. But with mm -hmm. the parable, it forces you to say, that'll work over here. Or, you know, that, Good that's point. So sorry. it makes Good you point. be able to adapt to the situation as things change because exactly. back then they crucified you. They don't do that anymore. Right? <laughs> you know, but I mean, yeah. physically. So, right. What? Right. So you, you, the same thing comes around. You you think back. Well, that oh, well, that's the same thing here, right? And I think that's what the Bible's meant. And I think that's what God wants us to do. And what Jesus was trying to say, you know, 
here's this. I've got a path I'm going. I'm going to give you some instructions, and you need to figure out yourself how to make them work because the end result is where you've got to be. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Right. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. I think exactly right. Yep. So. Kind of funny. Yep. Yep. So, all right. It's like, well, hey, we have a, well, we're no, talking I, about the, the wonders of God and how God works. Uh huh. Uh, years ago, a few years ago, I noticed a little problem with my house and I kind of just blew it off and didn't pay attention to it. <laughs> yeah, you had made a little that. stone, you know? Yeah. I ignored it till now. It's a boulder, but that's <laughs> you know, God. But I, but at the same time, when this all happened, even though it was devastating, upsetting, I said, well, thanks, thanks, Lord, for showing that to me, so I know to fix it now. Right. Uh -huh. you know, it's just like, get worse. Good point. <laughs> yep. Because I immediately knew, it was like, well, there's no one to blame here but me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, because I saw the writing on the wall, I just ignored it. Uh-huh. Well, uh, and, you know, sometimes we, we get into these situations where it's something little and yet it does lead to something bigger. So like Laura had, um, she had had cancer uh, in her throat and it normally is one that is not seen until it's gotten pretty far in. She simply was getting um, her teeth cleaned. And yeah. they happened to notice it and they caught it so quickly that it really didn't cause that much of an issue. But, you know, our first yeah. thought is, oh my gosh, it's cancer, yeah. but, but it's really should be, right. oh my gosh, I'm so glad we caught it that fast. Right. Uh, not, <laughs> not condemning the, the idea of cancer at all, but uh, rejoicing in the fact that it was found so quickly, um, yes. you know, because it happened. Somebody care. Somebody care. Yeah, somebody somebody yeah. care. Yeah, because you know the dental yeah. hygienist could have just said, "Ah, oh, well, it's nothing," or you know, "That's not my issue," or or whatever. Um, but she said, "Well, we ought to get that checked out." Simple. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. my doctor did the same thing. Yeah, he said your numbers are a little high. He sent me down to to uh, see the doctor, and he says you've got cancer. He says. And as the specialist I've seen, he said, well, you know, because of your age, those numbers, I would have just blown it off as normal. Right. Huh. But since it's your doctor, right. I've got to check you out. Well, thanks. I'm glad my doctor did. So I blame him for everything that goes wrong with me now, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> he always finds it. But, but I mean, it's just, it's the people that care, the compassion. And, Amen. And, Amen. You know, Makes godly difference. people. Yep. Yes. Makes the difference. But look for the good and try to, you know, and try to, to maintain it. I, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, I'll tell you what, let's pray. Um, and then let's head out and uh, uh, we'll just go from here. So, Lord God, uh, let us be your people <laughs> to be compassionate, to show caring, uh, go beyond what we're required to do and uh, go even further, yes. reach further, uh, have a desire to serve others to the extreme, uh, to be your hands and feet in everywhere that we are at, not just in our comfort zone and not just in the place where we're at. Allow us to be it everywhere. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes. All right. Amen. amen. All right, so All right. Uh, Wayne, you Kara, you guys have a good vacation. Uh, take a break. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> we'll see you guys. See everybody later. Okay. okay. Bye.